last two parts of the videos about the synthesizers. I want to talk about the filter section, the modulations and the matrix. And first I want to start off with the filter section and the amplifier section and these two have a lot in common so I'm just gonna explain these for one part and then the other should be clear as well. So the filter section consists of two different parts and the one on the top looks like all the other knobs in this synth as well but the lower part looks very different and has a huge effect on the way your synth will sound in the end. This is called an envelope and consists of four sliders for attack, decay, sustain and release. This envelope can be found here and like I said as well in the amplifier section. The buttons here on top of the filter section can be mostly explained really easy. The envelope button is for the amount of the envelope that you want to apply to your sound. That I will show in a moment corresponding with the envelope. The filter shape menu consists of pretty normal filter types. The default setting is a low pass with a slope of 24 decibel per octave. And then you have like different low pass types, band pass filters, a combination of high pass and low pass, high pass filters, band reduction filters, combination of band reduction and others, and all pass filters. These will sometimes change the sound only slightly and sometimes very drastic. Most of the time they have a huge influence or correspond to the cutoff button. What that means, I can show you really easy. Um, cutoff is basically, you see around here are numbers for your frequencies and cutoff means wherever you put your button, that means that at this point your frequencies will be cut off. And that depends on the filter type you choose. For that you probably have to experiment a little for yourself, but basically in this default setting it works like this. I have a low pass filter and my cutoff button is set to the highest frequencies. That means you can hear everything. But as soon as I turn this knob down, you will hear that some frequencies, well, at first, of course, the high ones of your sound will disappear. And what I meant before is, sometimes if you change your filter type, The sound will only slightly change, so there is sometimes almost no difference. But sometimes, for example, if I use the bandpass filter right now, you see, I can press a key, but you won't hear anything anymore due to the cutoff button. It correlates with the filter type, and right now, it's not working anymore, so I have to... turn my button until I get to a point where this filter type will work again. So filter shape and cutoff are correlating and make a big difference in the outcome of your sound. Of course, the cutoff button would be 
a very interesting destination for a modulation that I will show in a moment. Distortion means basically what the button says. You can choose different types of distortion for your filter section and these you can choose here. You can switch it off or use a tube or a clip, bit reduction or rate reduction with key follow for your distortion settings. Key follow I already explained. It is the same as here. If you don't know what that means, then check out what I said in the videos before. The only difference is here you can put in a center key. So right now your key follow centers around C3. That means this is the middle of your key follow function. That is probably good for a song in C major or A minor, but if you want to play, let's say, in E major, you probably want to put E or B or G sharp in here. And the resonance is also very interesting. That brings out certain frequencies that your filter type will produce. So sometimes these are not easy to hear and sometimes these changes are very extreme. So right now if I play a sound there is only a slight difference but if I use a different filter type You can hear that the resonance frequency has a big difference in the sound itself. So that makes like one certain frequency of your sound stick out. And now comes a very interesting but also a little complicated part, the envelope. I will show the envelope here in the amplifier section because it is a little bit easier to show what the faders do then here in the filter section because in the filter section it highly depends on your filter type your cutoff settings and the envelope amount button so if you're wondering why here in the filter section your attack is not doing anything then it is because you don't have the right settings here in these buttons above. For that reason I'm gonna switch over here in the amplifier section because the envelope functions are the same and I can still use them but I don't have to do any settings before it. That probably makes it a little bit easier for me to explain. Above your envelope you see this line and it gives a good idea of what your sliders do. If you play a note then your tone will go through these four phases every time you hit a key. And these are attack, decay, sustain and release. That means at this point you hit a key and then your note starts to develop until the top where it is the loudest. Then there is a decay phase where your note decays until you reach a certain level. And this decay phase is called decay. If you reach this level then your sound will stay on that level for a certain time and that is the sustain and after this sustain time your note will decay again until there is no sound anymore and this decay is called the release. So now I will show you how that sounds and most of these are really easy to understand and to use because the line shows very good 
what the buttons do and you can hear it really clear. Attack means I press my key and then it needs a certain time to get to the loudest point. This time I can change by using my attack slider. If I turn this slider completely down, my note will sound with the full level as soon as I hit a key. But if I drag it up, it will take a certain time for the tone to appear, like so. And the shorter the time, the less obvious this effect is. It just gets a little softer in the beginning and the longer it is, the longer it takes for the note to really appear. The decay is the phase after the loudest point, then it will decay to the level of the sustain. For explaining reasons, I now turned sustain completely down because now you can see or hear best what happens with decay. I have now an attack of 500 milliseconds and a decay of 500 milliseconds. And now if I play a note, You hear it takes like half a second for the note to appear to its peak and then half a second to completely vanish. That is the decay because I have my sustain level set to zero. That means the sound appears and disappears. If I shorten my decay, then after my note slowly appears, it disappears really fast. And if I lengthen my decay, then you can hear my note appearing and slowly fading out. If I put all the knobs down, you can just hear a very short percussive sound. Most of the time the default setting is like this. All buttons are at zero except for sustain. That means my note is sounding very fast for as long as I hold my key. And it sounds with a full 100%. So you see, in difference to the other sliders, sustain is not a time, but a percent setting. Because it doesn't change, it just reaches a level. So if I have my slider at 100%, my note will be 100% at level, but if I turn it down, it will sound at a lower level. So if I use a little bit of attack and then some decay, You see, it takes a little bit of time until my note is fully there. Then it slowly decays to a very soft level where it sustains. And the release time is when you let go of your key, how long does it take for the note 
to fade out. Sometimes the release button will not do a lot of change, so therefore I will turn it up really high and you will see the effect. Now, if I let go of my key, it will take a really long time for the note to disappear. So that is what the envelope does. And why do you have more than one of these? So this envelope is for your filter section. That means all the sounds that you produce in your synth will sooner or later come through your amp and therefore will be shaped with this setting. Your filter section is slightly different, although the functions here are the same. This envelope is applied to your filter settings, so that means it has more of a influence on the settings of your filter shape and the resonance, the cutoff, and will therefore be a drastic change in your sound before it gets amplified. In your amplifier section you have again a level knob and a panorama knob and both of the envelopes have one more fader which in default setting is at 0% and it's called velocity. That means if you hook up a hardware keyboard to your retro log or if you program MIDI notes with different velocity settings, then the envelope will not always work 100%. It will work as much as strong you hit your keys. So if you turn this up to 100%, that means that the envelope will work very different if you play your keys soft or if you play it loud. So the envelope changes with how hard you hit your keys.